The American Civil War was a tragic event in the history of the United States. It was a war of brother against brother and father against son. The war forced people to make very difficult decisions regarding their loyalties. One such person was Robert Edward Lee of Virginia. In this three-part series of podcasts, we'll get to know General Lee and we'll enter his world of challenges, victories, and defeats. My name is Dr. Rick Gardner from Columbus State University, and this is another Muskogee County School District podcast, Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee was a very loyal soldier in the United States Army prior to 1861. He graduated second in his class at West Point and then served with distinction in the Mexican War. In 1859, his services were called upon to quell the insurrection at Harper's Ferry, led by John Brown. Well, Lee lived in a large estate called Arlington, in a mansion just across the Potomac River in Virginia. It overlooked the capital in Washington, D.C. Now, when his home state of Virginia voted to leave the United States and join the Confederate States of America, Lee found himself in a difficult spot. Not only did he personally consider slavery immoral, he prayed for the abolition of it. And he also believed that it was unconstitutional for Virginia to leave the United States. Well, about slavery, here's what Lee said. Slavery as an institution is a moral and political evil we see the final abolition of human slavery is still onward, and we give it the aid of our prayers. When Lee was asked whether he thought it was constitutional to secede, that is to leave the United States of America, he said this about the U.S. Constitution. The nation was intended for perpetual union, so expressed in the preamble and for the establishment of a government, not a compact, which can only be dissolved by revolution or the consent of all the people in convention assembled. It is idle to talk of secession. So when the southern states seceded and the Civil War started, you might think that Lee would have gladly accepted the offer made to him by President Lincoln to command the United States Army against the secessionist rebels. But Lee did not accept that offer. Here is how he explained his choice. With all my devotion to the Union and the feeling of loyalty and duty of an American citizen, I still cannot raise my hand against my relative, my children, my home. I have therefore resigned my commission in the U.S. Army. Very reluctantly, Lee accepted the offer to lead the Confederate Army. Here is part of his acceptance speech in Richmond. I accept the position assigned me by your partiality. I would have much preferred had your choice fallen on an abler man. Trusting in Almighty God, an approving conscience and the aid of my fellow citizens, I devote myself to the service of my native state in whose behalf alone will I ever again draw my sword. Once Lee took the field, his initial battles against Union forces were impressive. In the seven days battle against General McClellan, Lee began to demonstrate greatness. In the second battle of Bull Run against General Pope, Lee led his men to another conclusive victory. Then crossing into Maryland, Lee fought McClellan again at the Battle of Antietam. And though outnumbered and outside of Confederate lines, Lee fought McClellan to a stalemate on that bloodiest day in American history, September 17, 1862. 
Lincoln was so disappointed with McClellan's inability to capture General Lee that Lincoln fired McClellan after Antietam. McClellan would attempt to get revenge on Lincoln by running against him for president two years later. In December of 1862, Lee guided his men to take up positions on the high ground in Marie's Heights at Fredericksburg, Virginia, knowing good and well that Union General Burnside had been ordered by Lincoln to attack him. Fredericksburg was sacred ground to Virginians because it had been the boyhood home of George Washington. On December 13, 1862, Burnside began his attack of the heights where General Lee was waiting with the assistance of General Thomas Stonewall Jackson. And Lee's army nearly slaughtered the Union soldiers during their failed attack. Watching his men kill the enemy at Fredericksburg, Lee said, It is well that war is so terrible. Otherwise, we would grow too fond of it. When the word of the slaughter at Fredericksburg reached the White House, President Lincoln declared that he was in the deepest pit of his life. General Lee seemed invincible. In the next podcast, we'll see how even Lee himself began to think that he was invincible. And then we'll look at how that feeling of invincibility led to his army's downfall near a town in Pennsylvania known as Gettysburg. My name is Dr. Rick Gardner from Columbus State University. This has been another Muskogee County School District podcast, Robert E. Lee, part one.